Hello, welcome to the Moon Scarab channel. My name is Ramon. In this video, I want to do a walkthrough of a tarot deck I recently received from Robin Crutchfield. Robin is a tarot tuber who has a channel called Tolstool Tarot, and he's well known within the tarot community. Robin was kind enough to send me one of the decks that he created, and I liked it so much that I decided to do a walkthrough. This is actually my first walkthrough of an indie deck, and I'm so happy it's this one. But let me give you some context to the story. I recently posted a tag on YouTube called One Tarot Card. It was my first tag and I wasn't sure how people would respond to it, but I gladly did it anyways. Through that tag, I was able to know so many amazing tarot tubers and their channels, including Robin, who was the first person who responded to my very first tag. So, after knowing Robin and his channel, I discovered that he was also a deck creator, and after seeing his work, I was fascinated with one of the decks that he created. Right when I was about to order it, that same day and unexpectedly, I received in the mail a copy of the very deck that I was interested in, the Open Face Tarot. I liked it when I saw it on his NPC store and now much more after having it in my hands that I decided to do a walkthrough about it. Just as a disclaimer, this walkthrough is not sponsored by the artist. But before we go in further, let me tell you a little bit more about Robin as an artist. Robin Lee Crutchfield is an American artist. He is best known as one of the founding musicians of the former New York no-wave scene. The no-wave can't be defined, but described in my opinion. It was a musical movement characterized by a rejection of recycled traditional rock aesthetics, commercial new-wave music, and a reaction against punk rock's recycling of rock and roll cliches. No-wave musicians instead experimented with noise dissonance. He has performed at several music venues and has his work displayed at the MoMA and the Whitney Museum of American Art. He's created very unique decks like the Open Face Tarot, the Open Face Tarot Ghosted, Little Norman's Little Lenormand Cards, the Toadstool Tarot, the Eyes Wide Open Tarot, and the Word Tarot Oracle. Off the bat, I'll tell you what I love about this deck. Number one, the images are timeless. You can't place it at any specific time period. Two, the character has no gender, race, age, or ethnicity, or any type of traits that can be placed to any culture, time period, or even planet, if you think about it. Number three, the size of the cards. I love small cards. To me, they're easy to handle, easy to shuffle, and easy to take with you anywhere. Number four, the quality of the cards are amazing. They're NPC quality, so they're not too thin or too thick. Number five, some people feel that reading with majors only can be limiting, but it can actually be very quite insightful. I find that majors say things that are very specific, whereas minors do a lot of chatter. So let's take a look together at each one of the cards of this beautiful deck. So from the very first card, we see the minimalistic approach of the artistic design. The open face full is stripped down to the very essence of the spirit of the card. A soul in motion carrying with him his little world in search of a big world. He has within what he knows in search of what he does not know, the unknown. Taking that walk forward without knowing what's ahead. Just to contrast it with the full from the RWS, the flower is just an accessory to the full. The sun and the scenery a setting, and the dog gives momentum to the narrative of the scene. But the very foundation is that motion, faith, and the temporal state of feelings, places, states of mind, all with a common denominator. The will to grow and discover in faith of a vast potential. Remember, the full is air energy, and this card is governed by the planet Uranus. So, it's all about anticipation, wonder, new journeys, potential, and curiosity. Alright, the next card, the Magician. Here we see the elements of what we identify the Magician with. The Eternity symbol, the raised wand in hand, and the four elements. We don't see a table though. It almost looks like the elements are part of the figure's body, of its beam. Not sure if intentional, but it reads as, you are all the tools you need, rather than they're here for you to use it. You have in you all the ingredients, the elements, the materials to manifest your vision of life. This is air energy too, ruled by the planet Mercury, so it's creative power, adaptation, skill, and self-confidence in new endeavors.
Next card, the High Priestess. With the High Priestess, we usually have a figure that traditionally we associate with a woman sitting between two pillars. Here, the elements that the High Priestess evokes are the pillars, the moon and the scroll. On this one though, she seems to be handling a sphere or a disc too, not sure. But the image says High Priestess. The High Priestess traditionally is a card about wisdom, intuition, awareness, and sound judgment. This is water energy ruled by the moon, so it's a fine balance between fluctuation and balancing opposites when making decisions. All right, the Empress. On this image of the Empress, the figure is sitting with a child growing within her. Love this card. This is earth energy ruled by Venus, so we see through this image fertility, development, and growth. But this is not only in the physical sense, but also can be nurturing some plan, growth, changes and things coming to fruition. Next card, the Emperor. This card depicts the figure in a side view position. This is interesting because it's the second image I've ever seen in which the Emperor is portrayed in that angle. This reminds me of the Emperor from the Alexandra Jupiter tarot deck. Here, the Emperor seems to be reflecting while looking at his orb, which of course is a symbol of power and authority. This card is fire energy, and it's ruled by Aries, so it's about foundation, victory, control, strife, and rational action if needed. The Hierophant The Hierophant is the educator, the teacher of tradition, divine wisdom and kindness, morality, the interpreter of sacred mysteries, and he's the holder of the keys. The Hierophant here is holding the ferula, the triple cross, which is merged in the character silhouette. Again, we can't say if, if it's a he or a she, but an energy of kindness and wisdom. Beautiful card. Next card, the lovers. The lovers is my significator card. I always have a resistance to see this card in the light of romance and love. And although it can be an aspect of its meaning, I feel that generally this card is overused in the romantic aspect to the point of becoming a cliche. That said, this card has a heart between both figures, but here you can interpret it in many ways. The heart can be divine love coming from above in those visible rays between both figures, which by the way does not represent gender. This is one of the best aspects of this card and the whole deck for that matter. The lovers are presided by a celestial figure radiating the energies of wisdom and love. The two figures are joined by a single heart, which unites them. In essence, this card, which is air element and ruled by the sign of Gemini, is all about commitment, balance, choices, and unity. This is a beautiful depiction. All right, the next card, the chariot. The chariot is water energy ruled by Cancer. It's interesting that the character is on top of a hill. I can interpret this as if on motion or not, Either way, it will take you to one direction or another. I love the depiction of this card. It's really creative. What I see here is determination, perseverance, direction, and focus in light of difficulties. Great card. The next one, strength. As the name implies, it represents the quality of being strong along with many other positive traits. We see the character on a profile view looking with a beast-like creature on the foreground. It almost looks like the creature is sleeping peacefully. The character has no visible arms, so it doesn't look like it's a struggle. It almost seems like the beast and the character are one. Even so, if you think about it, the depiction of the characters in this deck can also apply to people missing a limb, either by surgery or by congenital amputation. On many images, the figure seems to have only one arm or some limbs are not visible. The strength card always needs to be contextualized based on the spread and question you're trying to answer. Strength taps into our own inner strength and willpower to persist. I love this depiction very much. It says so much with its simplicity. I see self-assurance, confidence, passion, resilience, courage, inner power, and strength in general. This is fire energy ruled by Leo. This image can make a great tattoo. Not that I have one because I don't, but this will be a great image for one. Beautiful. The next card is the Hermit. The Hermit is earth energy ruled by Virgo. 
This is clever adding the moon because it helps you understand the concept of this hermit character being in physical darkness without the use of color. If you see this card has no signal of being nighttime if it wasn't because of the moon. I would have possibly added some lines here just to make it look like it's emanating light, but this is a great interpretation of a lamp. The perspective is fantastic. You almost feel like you're going to fall over the cliff into the void. This card is all about seeking wisdom and inner truth through solitude. It's divine inspiration and enlightenment. Beautiful card and one of my favorites of this deck. All right, next card, the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is fire energy ruled by the planet Jupiter. This little crown here at the top of the wheel might seem puzzling, but we see in lots of versions of the Marseille depiction of this card, usually with a royalty-like person or even a creature with a crown. There's a figure laying down on the ground that seems to be somehow defeated. It's the idea that in life, things can be on top or things can be on the bottom. Things do go up and down. That's the motion of life, the constant motion of the wheel. I love the overall idea behind the image of this card. It almost looks like saying, okay, it's your turn. Let's see what you get. Illustrating the concept of up and down of situations, chance, and sometimes the mysterious randomness of life. Great card. All right, next card, Justice. Justice is air energy ruled by Libra. The character looks like tiptoeing its way through life, carefully trying to maintain a balancing act, clearly focused on the scales and its balance. Interestingly, we see he's using only one hand. His head is tipped over, trying to balance himself to balance the scales. That's how we feel sometimes, footing an acrobatic act in our lives to maintain equilibrium, not only inside, but all around us. Great card. All right, the hangman. This is a clear depiction of the hangman without anything out of the traditional concept except that he's not visibly bound, and he's looking at the world from an entirely different angle. There's no halo, so it's more like a Marseille hangman, which don't have halos around the head. This image is one of the few depictions of the character in which you see the whole body, and of course it's necessary for the idea of the image. As you know, the essence of this image is letting go, sacrifice, pausing to reflect, sometimes uncertainty, like in a state of limbo and looking at things from a different angle. All right, next card, death. The death card is water energy ruled by Scorpio. This is a RWS depiction of death. Death on a horse with a flag or banner with figures in front of it in the death process. However, this death has eyes like some on the Marseille depictions. I think it was just the artist style to keep consistency with the main character's depiction. But let's explore the idea. We tend to see the death card as a consequential event of life, either if you want to see it as a metaphorical or physical death. But think about it. Like the main character of this deck, we are death too. We go through life bringing ends and beginnings to a myriad of moments in our path. Every decision we make is a death event. We end some things and embrace others. So we're not passive to the death process. We take an active role about it too. So it makes sense to see this character not just like a skeleton on a horse to slay us, but us being part of this every day, every moment, and with every cycle. All right, next card, Temperance. The Temperance card is fire energy ruled by Sagittarius. It's about the constant process of keeping things in balance. Temperance is sometimes the process of altering the state of something by blending or mixing in something else. And that's what we see in this depiction, a character passing some type of element or energy from one vessel to another. We see balance, peace, patience, moderation, calm, tranquility, harmony, and serenity. It's clearly depicted in this image. Next card. The Devil. The Devil card is Earth energy ruled by Capricorn. So again, as with the Death card, the character of the Devil is now with two human figures. At this point, it's safe to say that the artist's depiction of the main character is not human, but an energy. Like we see, the Devil character is holding two human figures. They're not bound like on the RWS depictions or even Marseille. Alright, indulge me in going a little bit deeper in this. 
Think of how we assume the devil energy in our lives. We exert sometimes toxic energies in our own persona. This card asks you, do you entrap yourself sometimes in your own insecurities, your own vicious cycles, and how and why do you bound your own possibilities and growth to poisonous feelings that kills you slowly and painfully? This can apply to all of us. So I think this card invites us to reflect about this topic. The devil is an energy, just like with death. It's not just something external, but it can and will at some point be us and come from within. This image is a great depiction of the devil. This card actually helped me think of that. We can be the devil in our own lives. Fantastic. All right, the tower. The tower is fire energy ruled by Mars. I love this card too. This is an awesome depiction. I'm fascinated by how simple and beautiful this image is. This tower has no crown, so it levels it to our everyday experiences. We all have tower moments in our lives. We can always expect the unexpected, the collapse, the upheaval, the destruction, the foundational shift, the reality check and adversity. But that doesn't mean that you end up lacking a foundation. You fall on new grounds, just like the characters here. Then you carve new paths, and brick by brick, you build a new tower to see afar to new horizons. Great card. This is actually my favorite depiction from the whole deck, this tower. I love it. All right, next card, the star. The star is air energy ruled by Aquarius. Generally, it represents opportunities, renewal, faith, hope, healing, and rejuvenation. The star itself carries the whole image. I honestly think it needs more. I love the whole deck, but to me, this image is hard to crack through though. I think it's the positioning of the vessel. I would have placed the vessel outwards for ease of reading. Maybe it's just me. Maybe the artist made it seem like as self-inflicting on ourselves issues since the character is spilling it on itself while looking down kind of surprised. I need to meditate further on this image, but keep in mind that this deck can also be used as an oracle. So I'm sure I'll find clarity on further readings when this image comes up. All right, next card, the moon. The moon is water energy ruled by Pisces. Love the depiction of this card. Love it. Love the moon. It looks like an eclipse, like a cubist Picasso-esque moon, or like, uh, what's that? Three quarters of a moon kissing the other quarter. This is interesting. So it's illusion as the moon should be. The moon is a card of mystery, subconscious illusion, intuition, things hidden, and this moon embodies that. I love how the moon looks between those two towers, the path and the animals. The one on the left looks more like a cat than traditionally the dog we're used to see on the RWS. In Marseille, that's more like two similar animals. Love this card. Two towers rise in the distance on opposite sides of the winding path. Beautiful. It's mysterious and somewhat magnetic, to be honest. One of my top favorite. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. Next card, the sun. The sun is fire energy ruled by the sun. I actually like that the artist kept the original angle of the horse from the RWS. Although we don't see the full sun, the rays touch directly the character. The RWS depiction of the sun, though, looks more like pulsating waves of light and heat. Um, I want to pause here to clarify something. We can't confuse the association of the sun with the fire element because the sun is not made of fire. Just like the moon card is ruled by the water element and the moon is not made of water, of course, the sun is fire because that's the element of the card. We all know that the sun does not have fire at all. The sun doesn't burn like a piece of paper. Fire as we know it needs oxygen for combustion and there is no oxygen in space. Therefore, no fire in the sun. The sun is just a ball of hot gases and energy that produces light and heat. The burning of the sun is not chemical combustion, it's nuclear fusion. This is a beautiful card and it will pair beautifully with any other card. All right, next one, judgment. The judgment card is fire energy ruled by Pluto. The depiction of this card is really clever. What better way to depict the risen dead than a coffin? The figure even looks like it's rising in spirit through the coffin rather than a corruptible mortal body. Digging deeper, 
It can be calling into judgment those things we consider dead in our lives and we resurrect when we reevaluate them under a new light. The devil, death, resurrection. These cards invite us to see ourselves as those archetypes in our own lives. We embody them, we live them, we kill them, and we bring them back. As with the temperance, we have to mix these to create something new and balance them to keep harmony in our universe. The world. Major Arcana 21. The world is Earth energy ruled by Saturn. This card is about accomplishments, success, completion, perfection, recognition, mastery, and it's the end of a cycle in which we're ready to start all over again into a new one, into a new cycle. This image is similar to both the RWS and Marseille depiction of the world card. You need to have the reference of the traditional image of the world to understand this one. If you see this card for the first time, it can also be read as a creature coming out of an egg, a cocoon or some kind of dwelling which kind of still goes back to completion of the end of a cycle and new beginnings, if you think about it. Okay, so this deck has an extra card. The card is a plus one card called the unanswered question. The artist depicted this face as a question mark, an unanswered question. Honestly, to me, it reminds me of the blank rune you find in most sets of the Elder Futhark runes. In case you're interested in learning about the Elder Futhark runes, I'm going to link a video so you can learn about this great tool. I use this plus one card as a significator. I normally don't use significators from the cards itself, and this card will be perfect as a significator for a person, a situation. And this is like an external fool, if you think about it, to the whole 22 cards. So, in conclusion, this is an awesome deck. I really love it, in all honesty. I'm really picky with tarot decks. I like 100% of decks for their artistic value, but honestly, and I always say this, I only like 1% of all of them, enough to have it in my collection and use it as a divination tool. And this is one of them that I started to use as a tool, as a divination tool, while at the same time enjoying it artistically. I hope that Robin someday decides to do the rest of the 56 Minor Arcanas because this deck is really fantastic and it's one of my new favorites. With this, I'm not saying that this work is incomplete. This deck is a tool of its own. But to me, this deck is so good that honestly, an expansion is a must. So consider that Robin as your legacy to the tarot community. This deck is actually going with me on my portable divination pack, which I carry in my bag everywhere. And I actually have a video if you want to see it, which I'm going to link here. So if you have any questions or comments, please share it with us. And if you haven't yet, go and subscribe to Robin's channel. I'm going to link it below. It's Toadstool Tarot. And if you're interested in this deck, I'm going to link also his NPC store where you'll find this deck and other great ones he's made. As always, thank you very much for watching and blessings to all. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment and share it with someone who might benefit from it. And click the subscribe button for more future videos about tarot, divination and other esoteric topics.